The Hon. Brian Walker. Thank you, President. I think members will be quite pleased to know that I've only got a few, well, maybe more than a few words to say, uh, but uh, a very different, very different tone. Uh, not, not more than a few moments of your time. Now, people who uh, know me will understand that at times I've got a very interesting point of view. I, I look at small things, they interest me. Uh, the questions arise. And I think all of us here have open minds. We must have open minds because we're looking here at our society, how may we help? And uh, so we're looking at small things which may be missed by other people. Small things which hit your attention. I was interested uh, listening at our committee yesterday, a point was brought up, and I had not the faintest idea that this was actually important, but it was actually a very important uh, event uh, uh, question in the, in the committee. And so I think all of us here have this tendency to be prepared to be surprised by things and ask questions. So open mind and asking questions is very important. Now, it's been a long winter uh, recess, and uh, small things have attracted my attention again. This is a study from the Texas A&M University of Public Health. Uh, and you won't be surprised to find out it's actually cannabis related. Well, look, I have to speak about cannabis because it's such an important thing. But this related to diabetes and cannabis. Now, I had not the faintest idea that diabetes could be of uh, any treat, uh, interest for, for, for cannabis. As a doctor, would I give cannabis to a diabetic patient? Well, yes, for neuropathic pain, certainly I would. But this one here looked at a study in female patients. Now, I have to say, men in the chamber, smoking cannabis will not cure your diabetes, nor, in fact, for women, will smoking cannabis cure your diabetes. But regular use, and what they're saying here is more than four times in a month, on average, of using both uh, CBD and uh, Delta-9 THC stimulate specific receptors in the endocannabinoid system, which, and this really blew my mind away, which results in improved glucose metabolism. So women who regularly used not a great amount of cannabis had less chances of, catch, of getting ca uh, diabetes. I find that type two. I find that remarkable. Type one is probably an autoimmune disease. So, but, uh, anyhow, so this isn't a niche issue. This is about 5% of our population. And in my clinical practice, I see this every day when I'm in the clinic. Uh, and it's, the numbers are increasing. It's four times uh, over the last uh, um, uh, 40 years, a fourfold increase in diabetes, 128,000 in WA. And that's probably underestimated by 50%. So 100,000 more people with undiagnosed diabetes. It's major. Now, I'm not recommending that everybody smokes diabetes to reduce the chance of, or, or, or smoke cannabis to reduce the chance of diabetes. But look, if you can shade things in your favor, you're actually going to have a less chance of blindness, dementia, kidney failure, heart attacks, strokes, and losing your limbs. So what we're pointing out here is that an open mind and asking questions would then lead you into further scientific research. And what I'm asking here is that we continue that approach in our uh, chamber here with an open mind and looking at what the facts might be and see what surprises may come up. We're not talking about a cure here, but we're talking about an attitude of mind in our um, the chamber here that we allow ourselves to explore with open minds what options may be for improving the lot of the people who live in this state. That's our duty. How may we serve our people? We're not saying we can cure diabetes with cannabis. Uh, not, and we're also saying here uh, that this is just a link to the, between the disease itself and the endocannabinoid system something which I deal with on a daily basis for other problems, Parkinson's disease, dementia, um, uh, autism in children. So wonderful things can happen if we simply explore the endocannabinoid system further. What we're saying here is more research needs to be done. And I welcome that WA is leading the way uh, in Australia in doing research into the endocannabinoid system. Wonderful things happening at UWA and uh, other universities here. So, Praising the, the researchers, praising the professors, praising the students who are looking into a, a new system. I knew nothing about the endocannabinoid system as a, medical, as a medical student, something which has come up. So opening our minds to the openings which are coming up here, allowing us to be more successful in helping the lot of the people who have elected us.